Welcome to our midweek Lenten opportunities for a chance to dig deeper into our texts that we have on Sundays, something to give us a chance to take a look at them further in the middle of the week as we consider what we heard just a few days before. This season of Lent, we're really taking a look at loss and love and diving into the meaning of Lent. We're looking at the juxtaposition between loss and love. And I think um, certainly these last two years, especially in our world, have given us a lot of experience with the loss part, especially. Um, but we've also had opportunities to learn about and experience love in different ways and different forms. So taking a look at Lent and the passages that we read and hear during the season of Lent, this gives us an opportunity to know that the passages really mirror our reality, that we experience love, hope, mercy, and grace. But we also know that these texts acknowledge loss and grief and challenges and hardships that we also face. So we also remember that we get an opportunity to experience love and God's mercy in the middle of grief. And so this is our opportunity to take a deeper look into what we've been hearing in scripture. And this past Sunday, the first Sunday of Lent, we heard from Luke 4, 1 through 13, we heard the stories of the temptation of Jesus when Jesus was given the opportunity to um, provide bread for himself by turning a stone into bread, when he was given an opportunity to obtain power and authority over all the world, and when Jesus had a chance to really put God to the test by saying, um, uh, the devil said to him, if you are the son of God, throw yourself down. Because as Satan's quoted, quoted scripture, um, he said, you will be able to be lifted up and your foot will not be dashed upon the stone. That was a chance for Jesus to put God to the test. And of course, we know that Jesus' response every time he was put to the test, every time he faced temptation was to quote scripture. Jesus was really focusing on what rooted him in his identity as a son of God, as a child of God. And speaking of scripture that roots us and reminds us of our identity, this is a reminder for you to make a note of some of your favorite pieces of scripture, the things that root you to who and whose you are, the things that you turn to in scripture when you need support, when you need something to, um, to help keep you going. We'd like for you to write those pieces of scripture down, just write the, the passage um, book and chapter and verse down and turn it into us at the office. You can email it to us. You can hand it to us on Sunday. You can put it in my box. You can do whatever you like to submit it to us. And we want to make a wall of scripture of uh, the things that really um, uphold us so that we can know as a community of faith what it is that really roots us and grounds us. And in thinking about these stories that are related to the temptation of Jesus, what we're really hearing and experiencing is Jesus' obedience, that Jesus was obedient to God in each of these three particular experiences, he trusted God to provide all the food that he needed, even when he was extremely hungry. He knew that there was a time and a place to display his power, and he knew where his authority really rested. He knew that you do not test God. Thou shalt not test the Lord your God. Obedience to God we know is not something that happens automatically. It's not a really easy and instant thing. It's not something that is a given. Obedience is not a given. It's a hard thing to do. 
for us to remain obedient to that which God would have us do, to live and love and um, walk in ways that we know are in keeping with what God would have us do. One of the things that we know is that the work of the Spirit, which is involved in the text that we had on Sunday, we remember that Jesus was full of the Spirit and led by the Spirit into the wilderness. The work of the Spirit requires faithfulness. Jesus had to be and to remain faithful to what it is that God called him to do and to be at any given point. And it turns out that the work of the Spirit in us and with us requires us to be faithful as well. We seek to live faithfully into our identities as children of God. When the devil was tempting Jesus at the top of the temple in Jerusalem, at the very pinnacle of the, of the temple, he said, since you are the son of God, throw yourself down. What if we imagined something like that being said to us? What if the question is, since you are a child of God, remember that it's not if, since, because you are a child of God, how will you embody that identity? That's a pretty big question. How will you embody that identity? It's going to look like practicing obedience, and it is a practice, something that we work at every day and get wrong, maybe just as often as we get right, but something that we practice at. It's going to look like being faithful. It's going to look like being obedient. It's going to look like trusting in God. It's going to look like believing in God's promises. So we're really being invited here to think about the meaning of living a Christian life. Taking the concept of these temptations that Jesus experienced and thinking about our own life in response to them. Think about the things that we face on a regular basis, the temptations that we fall into. And no, we're not just talking about the temptation to eat those potato chips that you gave up for Lent. We're talking also and more importantly about the temptations to think of ourselves before we think of anyone else, to put our own needs before others to ignore the people that are on the fringes and the margins of our society. Those are temptations that we sometimes don't even realize are part of our lives, but they are things that we face. They are things that we deal with. And so this midweek time, we have a chance to think about loss and love and what we experience in our lives, and where God is in all of that. We have an opportunity to think about the temptations that we face, the things that we wrestle with, and what it means to live a Christian life. And I really, really want to encourage you to think about your answer to the question, since you are a child of God, how will you embody that identity? The answer to that question will be different for each of us, but there are some things that we know are all going to be in common. It starts with remembering who and whose you are. May you never forget that, not just during this Lenten season, but all of your days. May God bless you and keep you now and always. Amen.